Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Today we go down under for the Flower Circus Talks. We go uh, all the way to Brisbane, to Boss Camp, who's going to tell us more about uh, himself, his wonderful company as well, Fleura Mets or Pedal Peddlers. So uh, let's quickly invite him uh, into the live stream uh, to know more about him and uh, you know, what he's up to at the moment. Good morning. Good, day, or, good morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good, uh, good evening from good, Brisbane. Good, yeah, good, good night almost, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's six o'clock here now, so yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's getting dark. Yeah. First of all, how are you doing? How's doing life? Really well. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. We're um, Life has been good. Um, we're in the middle of winter here now, or towards the end of the winter, but being in, in Brisbane, it's it's still 23, 24 degrees and, and quite sunny during the day, so I'm not complaining. No, that's uh, something uh, people in Holland wish to have, uh, <laughs> even in summertime. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. That's uh, yeah. No, it's it's a good place to be. Yeah, uh, you're Dutch, but you yes. have seen the whole world before you ended up in Brisbane, or the whole world. You've seen a lot of uh, places. So can you yeah. talk me through? Uh, yeah, after uh, you finished college, where did you yes. go? Why did you end up in Flowers and? Uh, how did you end up in Brisbane? Yeah, that's a bit of a story, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. I'll, so I grew up in Waalwijk in, in the province of Brabant in, um, in the south of Holland. I went to um, the green school first in Den Bosch, and then yeah. I went to the um, agriculture school in, uh, in Breda. Um, I, I was still pretty young then, so I decided to travel. So I looked in uh, Bloom and Blood. It's a Dutch flower magazine. Looked through all the ads, and I saw one for... Uh, uh, Crete for one of the Greek islands and yeah. so I, um, I contacted them there's a, a good friend of mine she's still a good friend of mine Suzanne and she worked in a dried flower wholesale place I went there and worked did dried flower arrangements uh, for about a year and uh, life was really good there so I um, I looked again through the magazine because I thought I have to escape this place otherwise I'll stay here forever <laughs> and so I went to pick tobacco leaves in Ontario Canada uh, for three months that was very tough, uh, but <laughs> okay. I saved enough money, uh, so I did a bit of traveling through through the states, and I had organized um, a job at Petal Peddlers mm -hmm. in, uh, in New Jersey. It's a flower shop in New Jersey. Uh, they do a, we're doing a lot of traditional flower arrangements in the triangles, um, and I really enjoyed enjoyed the work there. And uh, while I was there, I did some travel. I uh, went to Boston, and that's where I met Melanie. She's, she's now my wife. She's been my wife for 26 years, get that number right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so she was traveling with friends. Um, we, we met afterwards uh, three or four months later in New York again. They went traveling to London. I ended up um, going to Switzerland. I had a job lined up in Switzerland and Swiss um, in a flower shop. Um, it was an interesting place. It was right across the road where they make the Swiss knives. Um, yeah. And so that's always a good point. Lived in the Swiss house, you know, with the cars downstairs in one of the chalets. chalets. Um, it's a good experience. And I was there for about three or four months, uh, finished a job there. Went to visit Melanie in, in London. And um, I was looking around and I went to a few flower shops and I ended up getting a job at Harrods, the department store. Wow. Uh, it, yeah, it was it was still owned by Harrods then, and um, it was the first time I ever had to wear proper pants, and the first time I ever wore a tie. So I went back to Holland, bought my tie and, <laughs> and shirt, and um, and it that's when because some people will know me as Adrian as well or Adrian because that's my Christian yeah. name. So when you start at Harrods, they ask what's your Christian name. So I said it's Adrian. Um, so it's a bit confusing sometimes for people. So under business, I still sometimes known as uh, as Adrian. But uh, yeah, working as a florist there, I was making a lot of bouquets for Lady Diana, uh, King Hussein from Jordan, all a lot of famous people. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was a, a, a really good experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's and then together with Mel, we went back to New Jersey. Worked did a Valentine's Day in in in. Uh, in the states that was in new york that was sorry in new jersey not new york and yeah. that was yeah it was incredible and then after that we traveled through asia for about a year and a half before I arrived in brisbane 
Wow, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> you got your you got your air, air miles right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was uh, I was flying. Yeah, no, no points with that though, because I was flying all the cheap airlines. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, ending up with your wife, or back then maybe even your future wife. Yeah. Uh, ending up in in, in Melbourne, and then in what Brisbane. Oh, in, in Brisbane. Brisbane. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we were originally thinking of flying into Perth and then and then traveling overland to uh, to Brisbane. And uh, but after being in in Bali for a few weeks, Mel really wanted to go back to Brisbane, so we went straight to Brisbane. I loved it straight away. Um, you know, shorts and t-shirts, and I found a job at a at a florist called Parrots. One of the one of the older, fam more famous florists in Brisbane. Yeah. And I worked there f yeah for about three or four months and then I started working for a wholesaler. They were doing some bouquets as well. Um, and they're actually still one of my customers now. So it was, it was a really good connection, great family. I learned a lot. Um, and then a, I started Pedal Pedal is in uh, April, 17th of April, 1997, um, buying at a, a Christian flower auction. Yeah. Very, you know, it was, Nothing compared to you know what you experienced in Holland. It was very traditional. Uh, they had a Dutch auction clock, but it was very social. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was really you know, a, a good good time in the flowers. Then it was it was hard but working by yourself, but it was uh, yeah I really enjoyed it and um, yeah I learned a lot. Yeah. I guess it set up the foundation of where I am now uh, in the flower business. Yeah, and does the, the auction does it still exist or uh, not anymore? Uh, no, the, in uh, 2011, we had floods in Brisbane. Um, still give me goosebumps now. It was terrible. The, the markets got flooded. Everything was three, four meters underwater. Our business was a little bit higher, but um, they decided after the floods to move uh, away from the, the Brisbane, the Rockley flower markets. Uh, they, they were an auction for a little while. And now they, they still exist as a business, uh, but it's more wholesale business now. Okay, so they, they, they stopped the auction uh, part. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah because it, it was one of the, I mean, the Dodge auction is, is uh, famous for how it works because it's it's not a typical uh, auction as you see with, with other uh, things. Mm. And uh, the, it's in Holland. There's in Brazil, in Brazil there was one. Uh, in Brisbane, there was and one. New Zealand? Open New, New Zealand, yeah. they had one? Mm. So there's just a few around the world in the system uh, uh, like, like yeah, the Dodge auction works. So that was uh, quite a special place. It's exciting, and it, it, yeah. it's exciting buying at an auction. It's, I guess you can relate a little bit in, in like to gamblers then, but it was it was really, I really enjoyed it in in taking opportunities. And sometimes you'd miss out on product too, of course. But it's, I thought it was a really fair system. Um, it was that app and flow for if if there was a shortage, the flow got good prices. If there was a lot, it was good for the buyers, and it always seemed to be a real good mix. Um, mix of product yeah um, yeah so really good so that, that's how you start the pedal peddlers and and now we know where the name comes from as well because yeah you worked in new jersey uh, for a store like that pedal peddlers yeah, yeah that's right and the, tr the traditional name they got the name of um um of when in new york when the people used to go to the markets on their bicycles with the flat front like they yeah. do in holland you get all your freight at the front and that's where they would sell the product and um I really liked the name, so I, I asked Calvin. That was Calvin Bulmer. He was the owner in uh, in New Jersey. He said, yeah, "Of course, it'd be great to you know. We'd love to ha you to have that name." Um, yeah, and it's it's just nice. It's nice to have that as part of our history. Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, now you're really a pedal peddler as well because uh, you bought a, a typical Dutch old uh, bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we did. I uh, <laughs> yeah, we we looked. <laughs> Uh, it's actually quite hard to cycle on them because the bro brakes are, you know, it's a back kick. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, that's an inter that's actually a proper Dutch one, uh, that one. I bought it um, from a guy that had it in the shed for six years. And yeah. he, he had bought it from a German guy that was selling sausages at a market in Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it still has the sticker on the back, and it still works. So it's uh, when I um, Lachlan, uh, he's the manager at Pedal Peddlers. He uh, he came across it, and I thought, oh, awesome! I'd been looking for one for years, and this is it's a it's a solid one. But uh, yeah. I 
I wouldn't want a seal seer with one of them. <laughs> it's it's quite a heavy bicycle as well, I can imagine. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's good for your legs, though. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And uh, imagining Brisbane isn't as flat as Holland, so uh, then no, it's no, really Daniel hard. Daniel is fine. Daniel will yeah. be fine. Just uh, <laughs> don't worry about braking, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's that's really cool that you got that in the in the company now as well. So, I mean, yeah. just adds yeah, up. Yeah, we got it. There. We use it as a display, so it's um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's, it's when you walk in, it gives you a good feel, and there's a bit of I guess a bit of Dutch in in Brisbane as well. It, yeah, it's I, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. So uh, you you were based at the uh, flower auction. Did you move as well after the floods, or did you stay at the same place? No, uh, well, after the auction, I because um, I, I was basically had a corner in the auction originally, and then I moved out and, and joined another wholesaler that had a just a small call a call room that we used. Yeah. And the current premises we're in, we were there in 2011, uh, and the premises now uh, is made out of five warehouses connected in a boomerang shape on a U shape. Yeah. Um, and so we had oh, there you got it in the picture. We had one of those units, and now we have the whole complex. And at the back is a cold room as well. Um, and um, yeah, when, when COVID hit, we um, you know, things were getting tough, but then that was only for a short period. And now uh, we, we outgrown these premises. So um, we, um, we are looking for, so for something larger. Okay. So uh, yeah, we're hitting the subject uh, COVID, which we can't uh, avoid, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, yeah. yeah. What happened in the beginning? Just short because, uh, yeah, yeah, it was not the best period oh, to remember. No, no, it was um, be, being part of Fleur Metz. I guess I got the news pretty quick what happened in Holland. Martin uh, Verret called me up and and basically said how bad it was, and it hadn't really hit here. I just come back from uh, from a holiday overseas. The first month, it was really I was looking at what our break-even point would be for April, yeah. um, because it they were talking about lot lockdowns and nobody really knew what was going to happen and if lockdowns, if we could even trade in lockdowns. But in Brisbane, uh, being the flower industry is part of um, of agriculture, so we actually we've we've had several lockdowns in Brisbane, um, and but we've been able to trade and it's um, we've actually during COVID. Our business is, has exploded, basically with with making the right decisions and uh, so and, and luck. We we needed some luck as well and dealing close with our local growers, uh, with import as well. So at the end, COVID has helped us grow the business uh, to where we are now. Okay. Uh, but it's been a real challenge. Yeah, you already said uh, uh, Metz Holland helped you out a lot. Uh, you're uh, yeah, part of Fluoromets now as well. Uh, since yeah. what is it? Almost ten years, maybe? No, no. We, um, four, four and a half years. We. Uh, oh no, we, sorry. We actually picked the first of April, and it wasn't meant to be a joke. But <laughs> it, it ended up being that was the date we, you know, um, Casper and and Martin were here, so that was the date we ended up picking because it suited. Uh, so that was four four and a half years ago now, and um, yeah, it, it just felt right. Um, to merge with Fleuromets. Um really, it's a it's a large company. Yeah. Um, interestingly, a lot of people in Australia hadn't. If you ask a hundred florists in Australia five years ago, maybe five would know, of it, and the rest really didn't. But in the rest of the world, it's obviously a well well known name. Um, but it's it, being a large company, it still feels very family orientated, very family owned. And uh, yeah, I'm really really. It was one of the best things I've ever did. The merge yeah. with Fleurimets. Yeah, I can imagine all the knowledge that's there as well, and the people, and, yeah. uh, which helped you out not only during COVID or in the beginning of COVID, but also yeah. all the information you get from a ever-changing and, yeah. and daily changing floral industry worldwide. Uh, it's good to yeah. have a big team uh, behind you. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So it's um, and and in the past we were getting visitors too, so it's it's nice then people come and travel. And then they'll, you know, they'll, they'll pop in, and you know, it, it's nice to share. It's, it gives you an excitement when people come from other parts of the world and share their knowledge, and they can see what we do. And it's yeah, it's it's exciting. Yeah, exciting. we like getting visitors. It's uh, yeah, you can show them around as well, and uh, 
not only yeah. the flowers, you can show them the, yeah, the wildlife as well. <laughs> that's when uh, Art came for a visit. Um, he, uh, he, he, he's in charge of all the plants in, at Fleurimets and it's nice. Like we, you know, we do a lot of work and in between, I think, you know, when you're in Australia, you have to you know, pat the kangaroos and um, yeah, it's nice to see all the koala. Uh, yeah. It's part of Australia. So it's, you know, it's like when you go to Holland, you want to see the windmill, but no, it's nice. It's nice to do something in between that's, uh, that's typical Australia. Yeah, and of course, uh, probably uh, the barbecue as well, the barbie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we do that. Well, I try it uh, when it's Valentine's Day or Mother's Day on on the actual day itself. Yeah, um, I barbecue for for all the customers that come in. So this this boat was taken at uh, you know, three or four a.m. in the morning, and uh, it, people really appreciate it, and I like doing it, uh, and and of course, uh, but you know, the staff enjoys it as well. <laughs> Always yeah. quick enough. I mean, uh, you told me it's it's quite busy at the moment that it feels like Mother's Day every day, but obviously you're not doing the barbecue every day now. <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't. Uh, I, I, I would like to, but uh, yeah, we're running out of we do uh, we do make a good coffee though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we do make a good coffee. <laughs> yeah, and otherwise uh, your customers get big, but not in the way you want them uh, if you do the barbecue every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can get lean meat. What do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Don't know if it's tasty, but <laughs> I get the sources for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, before uh, Flora Metz was in the picture, you also started. Uh, you you had your wholesale already, but you also started uh, importing flowers, yeah. which is a little bit different uh, than all the other countries getting flowers into Australia. Can you, yeah. can you explain me a little bit uh, what's needed to import flowers in Australia? Because a lot of people uh, don't know you, don't know it yet yeah. or don't know the, the specifics. Well, importing in Australia is, is um, it's, it's a real challenge and it's, the biosecurity is, uh, is very important to Australia. Because we are an island, we, we don't have a lot of, well, there's, we do have diseases, but not a lot of, we don't want a lot of diseases. We don't have to come in. So um, every um, every shipment, we get a big percentage of the flowers inspected, and if there is a problem with the flowers, they uh, they do get fumigated. Um, in the last couple of years, um, Australia started with permits, importing permits, and they're very strict. So, it, and I I think it's a really good thing. Um, it keeps, I guess, people that don't want to stick to the rules out. Um, but it also it gives us the opportunity to feedback directly to the growers because in the past we would they would might say there's an actionable insect, yeah. meaning we don't have the insect in Australia, and that doesn't happen often. It used to it used to be oh there's an actionable insect or a live insect, and I might might be um, you know, 40, 50 percent of the shipments, but it would only be one like one insect, and they all get fumigated. Now we're under ten percent. Uh, and we feed everything back to the grower. We have a whole system in place. If if there is a grower that, that gets um, uh, more than one actionable insect in in the shipment, we, yeah. we uh, put them on hold for a month. And if that happens again, we'll we'll basically won't deal with them again. And the grow like I visited Ecuador and Colombia, and it's it's very important that face to face talk with the growers, uh, and they really appreciate it too. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's uh, that was in Ecuador. Um, and they really appreciate it, and it's it's also understanding how growers work, and and certain things we we might like done, but they, they just can't physically do it, like with yeah. certain um, certain way of packaging. But when you see how they work, we it's working together. Look for a win-win situation for everyone involved. I think that's that's the most important thing in in the whole floral industry. Yeah, getting uh, to talk. To each other uh know each other as well yeah. uh see what's possible but also see what's impossible from both sides because uh sometimes a grower does the thing he does well and he thinks this is how a customer wants it but the customer is thinking why aren't they longer shorter or packed in a different way that's right and maybe in melbourne they'd like a 60 centimeter rose every day but in brisbane everybody likes a 50 centimeter rose it's Little things, little. It could be just little things. Um, yeah. Yeah. So traveling is, is yeah what you did a lot, uh, and 
for pearl peddlers or for the import company uh, also to the to the growers uh of obviously yeah. you can't do it right now uh how does it if uh, affect the business um well the good thing is we set up all the groundwork with visiting growers in the past um in, in obviously in brisbane uh and queensland we can still visit growers yeah uh, but with uh with the way things have been in and how busy we've been it's it's that's been a real challenge uh like normally we would go to Melbourne a few times a year and meet our growers while well, we haven't been able to go for the last year and a half. I booked it for last month, but there was lockdown again. So, yeah, yeah so it's it's not possible. But we have the relationships with the with the growers and with the technology, with using WhatsApp for photos. It's it's good. But, yeah, as soon as the possibility is there again and it's safe, we'll, um, we'll definitely go again and meet up with all our growers because it's, it's important to – to, to get the connection and have a good connection with the grower because if we can sell the product we can pay everyone you know, and, yeah. and they can buy, grow more product there's no good growing a lot if it's the wrong color or people don't want to sell it the, or buy the, it buy yeah. it is probably more important the end customer is, the, is at the end is the person that makes a decision yeah uh you already said you're also buying from uh, local growers or yeah we, we call it yeah. local growers although melbourne is, is quite far away <laughs> And Perth is still local. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, local meaning Australia, I guess. Yeah. 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 We're the most isolated city in the world, uh, they once told me. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful city. Um, yeah. How did, do you see uh, during COVID uh, the percentage of, of local grown flowers? Uh, did it went up or? No, because it's, um, we, we, we probably, um because when COVID hit we it was close to 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 mother's day i guess and then we after that we go into our winter yeah. and in australia there's not not that many growers that have glass houses to grow in in queensland it's it's reasonably warm so around the Bundaberg area there's still growers um but we had we had enough supply so um we started dealing paying grows a lot faster and um, so at the moment we probably have about 80 Eighty percent local, twenty percent import still, and that's okay. the mix we've always had. So we we like to top up with import product, yeah. um, where we can. Uh, the other thing is with um, with local growers in the areas where they are, where they started, the families. The, um, there's a lot of spreading of population in Australia, and Australia doesn't often go up; they go out. So where the growers are now, that used to be. You know, there's farmland and now there's all housing around it so the second generation or third generation go oh wow that's our retirement right there and so because you have to have a passion for growing uh, yeah. if you don't have it yeah then quite often they sell the properties yeah uh, it's not only having a passion for uh, growing i think you need to have to have a passion of, for flowers as well i mean yeah you start quite early in the morning or at night time actually i mean it's unbelievable yeah, i saw yeah, the, op uh, the opening hours on your website is 4 30 in the morning but yeah. obviously you need to start earlier to get everything ready <laughs> yeah yeah we have our couriers coming at 6 a.m uh, to pick up so uh, we have a lot of staff that starts uh, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning so that's uh yeah that's really early <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh there you go yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i even wear my echo uh, tag on it so yeah I Dutch see. football team hey they uh, were um, I don't know if you knew, but they were, the, they were on the first position in Holland for the first five minutes. Yeah. Because there was only <laughs> one game played. So. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put that in. Because yeah. that happen again. So. Uh, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had the same with Adel Den Haag. Before the competition yeah. started, they were always first. But uh, <laughs> in the end, you had to turn the table upside down. Then they were first yeah, again. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, that was with the import. Like we hydrate our product. Make yeah. sure that the cool chain, because it's so hot here. In Valentine's Day is in February. We've had 40 degrees, 40 degrees Valentine's Day. So we're in cold rooms, unpacking, um, keeping it in there as long as we can and look after yeah. the flowers, hydrate them, and then send them to our customers. Yeah. I mean, it's it's unbelievable the the, you know, the temperatures you all sometimes get in, uh, in Australia or in Brisbane. Mm. So to keep them cold is, is something really, really important. Yeah, I think it was last year. It was quite unique with um, 
I think in Brisbane it was like 38 degrees and then in Holland it was really cold. So they had trouble with things freezing up and we had trouble with you know, things heating up. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a totally different problem. Yeah, then you can see that you're on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, yeah, I've, got, I've got so many pictures and the, the nice thing is with all the pictures uh, where you're on, you're smiling and the people around you are smiling as well. So it looks uh, like you've got oh, a great go. see, team of people around you. That was we visited the uh, Melbourne markets with uh, with Victor, yeah. uh, Victor Van Dijk. He's a uh, um, he's a person in uh, for Fleurmats in Ecuador. I have a good, really good relationship with him. I mean, with, with starting the importing, it took us three or four months to look at it. Yeah, and he's uh, he's he's he, he's actually his family was Van Dijk Van Dijk hydrangeas or still is. Yeah, you can see the sign on the highway when we drive past. Beautiful hydrangeas. Yeah. Uh, I wish you could import them here, but we're not allowed to. Um, yeah, and stand behind it used to work for us. So it's, uh, okay. yeah, that was early in the morning, but I, yeah, I, always, I do enjoy seeing new things and you know, just meeting people in the flowers. I love it. Yeah, that's great. Dyke van Dyke, actually, they, they call themselves the master growers now uh, nowadays. So it's not Dyke van Dyke anymore, it's the master growers. Oh, okay. So, uh, but well, they uh, are. I have to say, the stuff is beautiful. So they like to be a master grower to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable the, the hydrangeas they make. They're really beautiful. Did yeah. you see this? Did you see the smoky ones? No, no, I haven't. I have to they, look at next time. they not when they're not really opened yet. They they paint them a bit black. So when they open, it looks like they're a bit smoky. So it's they've got them only a, a oh. short period of time, but they're really cool. Wow. I mean, it's amazing when you drive through that area there of Westland. It's it's like a different world. I find it amazing. All the glass houses everywhere. It's uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah. Uh, glass houses everywhere. You just said glass houses are, are, are growers are disappearing in Australia. How do you see the local production for the coming 10, 20 years? What will happen? Will it disappear more because uh, the rural areas are expanding or uh what will happen that's a very good question um i would say there's, there's younger growers coming too so I, I i think it'll continue and and the prices of flowers cost pro, the cost of the flower flowers have gone up so i hope that that will encourage people to to start growing flowers because it is an expensive <clears throat> it's expensive and 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 in the climate that we're in you know if everything was perfect they would all make a lot of money, but there's always yeah. something happening. You can have a hailstorm, not enough water, have to buy the water. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think as a whole industry to, in Brisbane, um, it's, yeah, it, I think it looks really good. And the, the quality of the florist in Brisbane, I've gone up in, immensely. The, the, so it's, it, yeah, it's, it's world class now. Yeah, oh, that's really, really good. I mean, the world champion is uh, is Australia. Yeah, yeah, Barty is one of our customers, and um, he he actually um, I, when I got some photos from him, it was good to see he he had Fleurimad's boxes from uh, from Holland, and okay. he won it in the States. I think it was yeah. in Atlanta. So that's a nice connection, and I found out who did buy the flowers for him. So yeah, it all you know, all makes the world go around, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's really cool. Uh, you yeah. obviously also worked for a lot of, or a lot of you, you worked for as a florist uh, yeah. all over the world. How does it help you in in, in your current work or uh, as a wholesaler? Well, I think it, it I think it helps us a lot um, because m normally I guess uh, wholesalers start from growing and they from growers that bought extra product and started wholesaling. I think. As far as I know in Australia, there's not many more that started from a florist turning into wholesaler. Um, it, it helps a lot because you know what it is like to be on the other side of the, of the counter you know, supplying to, to customers. And it helps with, with especially special events. And in, in my team, or in our team, I should say, um, we have quite a lot of florists, ex-florists. We even... Recently, okay. one uh, one of the florists after he sold his shop, he joined our, joined our team. So, and it was actually interesting to hear from him too. Was like to get the understanding what it is from our side. And he, he was, um, yeah, I think he was quite surprised to see how much how much work there is involved to that before it ends up on the trolley for the customer. Yes, yeah. uh, and, and, and that's only the wholesale part. Then you have the grower part, shipping part as well. So uh, yeah, 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 I was talking to one of my. Uh, 
one of my colleagues in, um, and it was a, it was a, a stem, a, a rose stem that had, had a broken head on. And I said, God, what a shame. I said, the energy that has to go in that one stem from the little plant growing, if it's, it doesn't matter what part of the world, all the care that it takes, you know, the six, seven weeks to come at this 50 centimeter rose, somebody ch- cuts it, it gets packed in a bunch and then it comes to a warehouse and the head snaps off and you go, oh my God, how sad is that? But it's yeah. a one stem, but it's still a lot of energy goes in that. Yeah, and then still, that's what I tell a lot of florists as well during our shows. When something breaks, just put it aside, put it on water. You can always use it in a small arrangement or something like that because it's the waste throwing it away. There's so much time and energy uh, spent to make that yeah. beautiful flower. Yeah, and, I totally uh, agree. That's, that's something maybe uh, some countries are already doing or some florists. Uh, others are just thinking, okay, I need one bouquet and what will happen next? That's that's something else. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's unbelievable uh, how much effort we all put in the flowers. You getting up uh, in the middle of the night, uh, breeders working on, on making new varieties for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's such a great industry if you see what's, what's behind it. And I think that's yeah. something we should tell more as well. Also florists to their customers. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the experience of just seeing um, like an iris when it's tight and you have it in a vase and it just opens up. I think it's still spectacular to see that. I think yeah. it's stunning. Or I mean, a tulip, it, you know, it's, it's tight and you see the color coming out. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just when a, a flower comes to life, something's happening. And that's what I noticed during the pandemic that people uh, – we're buying flowers and also looking more at them. So not only uh, they come home and they see some color in the face, no, they really noticed that uh, the lily was opening, the tulip was opening or the iris. Yeah. Uh, re- people really uh, paid attention to it and, and got more feeling with f- flowers and plants. Yeah. And I think there was a big difference in, uh, if I compare Holland, let's say with Australia, in Holland flowers have been on, on, a, on a shopping list when you go to the shops. And Australia was always a real luxury pro- product in the yeah. first year. Ago. Uh, now it's been a lot more mainstream. People actually do buy flowers home, and uh, it's not. It's nice to see. It's nice to see that I think, you know, you have a flower in your house, a, a bunch of flowers in your house. It just makes a difference. Or a plant, yeah, it creates a good atmosphere in the house. Can you see that in, in the demand as well for flowers and plants? Yeah, the. the Plants have gone up a lot. We, we never used to sell a lot of plants because we were restricted in space as well. But we we do we do sell a lot of plants now. We we plan in the future to sell a lot more because I think it's a real real, real good market with more apartments start coming up in Brisbane and people working from home. You know, it's nice to have a bunch of flowers or, or plants yeah. on your desk or on the side of your desk. I think it's great. Okay. And it's good for, for sales, I guess, but <laughs> this is more from you know, for a feel, a feel, a feel thing. Yeah, um, but plants is can you even import them plants or is it uh, local produced? No, it's all local. It's all local produced. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Phalaenopsis plants they do uh, import. I think it's from Korea. No, it's not Korea. Taiwan or Korea. Uh, they buy the little plants and they come in and then they um, cultivate them here. Yeah. Okay. So so they can get some of the material, uh, but yeah. as I understand, you can't get uh, soil and a plant. No. Together, you can't get into Australia. No, correct. You can't. No, you can't. But, but I mean, there's a lot of succulents and everything that's grown here. So, I mean, you can cut a bit off, you stick it in the ground and it grows. You give it a bit of water and fertilizer and it grows. Yeah, and you've got uh, sun enough. So, that's not the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Sometimes when it's too dry, it's a problem, but you just put a bit of water with it and it'll be okay. Yeah. And uh, what about other trends in, in the flowers, uh, native flowers uh, in, in Europe and the US? We see the, the dried flowers as a big trend. Dried flowers is a very big trend in Australia. When I came to Australia you know, close to 30 years ago now, it was it was a big trend. I was even doing classes in uh, in dried flowers. But currently it's okay. a big trend and natives are a big trend. But the problem with natives is it takes quite a few years for a plant to become in production and, and for yeah. eucalyptus it can take five six years on some varieties so um there is a shortage of 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 those of those products but sometimes it's nice to all, not always have a, a glutter of everything it's nice to have still have seasonal products 
like wax flower that yeah. um, you know comes from different areas but it's not always around but when it's around it's it's beautiful to see so it's yeah it's it's it, a lot of people and another trend i guess is to do with uh with coloring as well a lot more coloring and and yeah. uh, natives mix with other flowers it's um, there's a lot of beautiful i mean I, I guess when you look at instagram you can see so many nice things these days so it's it's really nice it inspires everyone i think yeah, yeah, the Instagram and Pinterest. I mean, uh, I think every bride is looking on Pinterest for ideas. And uh, the challenges yeah. some of the uh, the florists get when they yeah. get a, a Pinterest picture with ten thousand filters on it, so you don't know if it's red, pink, blue, or <laughs> or black. But uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, it's a Pinterest one from from let's say England, and it's uh, definitely not in season here that time the year that challenge <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, but, but it's nice to, to to have those challenges as well and especially yeah, uh, yeah you can import the flowers and then you know what probably you can most of the times you will find them uh, anyway for them yeah yeah if it's available we can get it so yeah and that's something i think also changed over the the, the last 20 years peonies are Obviously, there's a season for peonies, but you can almost get them year round, and and with a lot of other products as well. I do find that a shame, though, with peonies with or peonies, whatever whatever you call them. Yeah. Um, I do like to get them only certain times of the year when you really go, oh, they're in season. This is great. It's one of yeah. those lines, and they are. It is a very expensive line in Australia. Um, uh, this year we did, or the last few years we haven't imported any from Holland because it's been a real challenge with air freight. Um, but you know the local New Zealand has some really good growers, but Tasmania has a lot of good growers too. Yeah, uh, very small, smaller farms. So it's already, and that's the problem with weddings because the season might only be for two or three weeks. So it's and every year it's slightly different. So it's, yeah, it's a, a challenge. Yeah, what yeah. Can you do? And, and planning your wedding only for the peonies. I don't think a lot of brides are doing that uh, thing. No, but they should though because they panic so much sometimes that they can't get them. <laughs> Yeah. Then the bright <laughs> it turns out to be a bridezilla. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then COVID hits. Yeah, I don't oh. like that joke, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you already mentioned it. Uh, air freight. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Australia. It, it's an island, uh, and yeah. then people flying in and out it's of Australia is almost uh, impossible. Let's say it. Yeah. Uh, so the amount of flights is, is limited as well. So that probably influences uh, yeah, your way of buying and, and getting in stuff as well. Yeah, it's a super, it's a super challenge. Um, I think into Brisbane, there's only five flights, international flights, um, two or three airlines. So um, and space is well, there's no existing spare space. So the space that we have, we have have to keep so even yeah. when it's a bit slow you still have to fill up the space otherwise you lose it um oh. so it's yeah it, it is one of those things we just i guess we just have to live with it really um when the prices go up like they did two weeks ago um you just have to suck it up as they say here <laughs> yeah. there's not much else you can do you can't go and, and go to a competitor because there is none yeah um, and then is there any any uh, forecast on when uh, more flights will start to fly or uh, when people can travel again or isn't uh, uh, there no news yet? Well, the forecast is now, oh, this is just from my memory, I think 70% of the Australians have, have to be, um, have the vaccinations and we are, I think we're at 30% now, but I don't expect anything before April next year and that would be really fast if that was the case. Um, I think Qantas, I think they're looking at somewhere in 19, uh, 19, 2023 uh, with their calculations. Oh. They put a lot of planes on hold. Um, so it's, it's the unknown, really. Let's see what, you know, let, let's see what this next half year brings. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just going to be a challenge. It's the same for everyone. So um, we just keep battling on, really. Yeah, that's the only thing we can do. I think we're, we're lucky that we're in the floral industry, which is uh, performing uh, well during this yeah. uh, this pandemic. Uh, that, that, that's the good thing. But uh, obviously, we need to meet each other again. We need to meet uh, the, the, the suppliers and everything to uh, yeah. Yeah, just to move forward as well as a floral industry. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's why, you know, when you have fairs and trade fairs, 
it's good just to meet up with people and have a coffee or beer or whatever. It's it it I don't know. It, it just creates something that face to face meeting you can't beat it. Um, but it's not a, it's not available at the moment. So luckily we've done it all in the past. So we got good contacts everywhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on on what we do now. Really, it's we have to deal with what we have. Yeah, and and uh, you're doing a good job. I mean, uh, business is, is is growing or is, is blooming, as we can yeah. uh, we can say. So that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's is. really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, I uh, hope uh, you find that or you, with the premises and with the new uh, plant department or not new plant department, but growing with the That'd plants as well. That would yeah. be uh, really good. Uh, what about uh, events, weddings, things like that? Is it happening at the moment in Australia or? Uh, I'm talking about the whole of Australia, but obviously... No, not really, because at the moment, I think out of the... Australia is what, about 21 million people and 15 million people are isol in, in, uh, are in, sorry, in lockdown. Got the, yeah. In lockdown. It's really only Queensland and um, I think WA are open again. Um, okay. So, yes, there is, there is weddings uh, in Brisbane, but... As, I mean, that could change any time. Like we had a lockdown, I think it was three weeks ago, a snap, a snap lockdown. So it was, I think it was like, it was on a Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon at four o'clock. They announced that morning at four o'clock, there will be a lockdown because there's a few, two or three cases found. Yeah. And they, it's just for five or six days. So if you had a wedding on the Sunday, I think you're allowed to have 10 people at the wedding. So it's, it's not really a good time to organize a wedding with having that stress. Uh, yeah. But they no, they are they are still happening. Um, yeah, but obviously yeah. not the, the the huge ones uh, that, no. that normally happen. No, not at all, not at all. Um, but that's only I guess they'll only push it when things open up again. That's going to push it to next year or the year after. So it's going to be yeah. big event years coming up. I thought this year would be, but no, it'll be <laughs> probably next year or the year after. Yeah, everybody was hoping actually that, that 2021 would be the year of the weddings, that, that the whole summer would be full of weddings. Yeah. Mm. Which is happening in some countries. We can see that uh, in the UK it's it's happening. Uh, yeah. But still, a wedding is not something you plan two weeks ahead. Not a lot of people do it like that. No. Uh, let's let's put it that way. So. No, true. Very true. Yeah. And and let's hope that 2022 is going to be the year with all the the big events as well. Yeah. That's, uh, It'll yeah, be really well, cool. Yeah, it's, it will be a bright future. I mean, um, especially in the flower industry. I can, I can yeah, See, seeing the people working more with flowers, like we said, plants and, and having more. F I yeah. mean, we looked for many, many years and uh, the, the Flower Council in Holland said it as well. We need to get young people to buy flowers and plants again. And it took us a pandemic yeah. to, uh, to get them buy flowers and plants again. Yeah. So, yeah, and we do have a lot of young young florists that start businesses, and it's really good to see. It's uh, it's very encouraging. Yeah. Like when uh, when they have uh, uh, florist students here, they come and visit visit with groups, and we show them around and try to help them because I was a student once myself, and yeah. you know, flowers can be very expensive. So we uh, we always try to help where we can, and it's good to have you know, f new people, fresh blood, new ideas, and. Yeah, it's good. It's good for the whole industry. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Great that you're yeah. helping out uh, the young students. Yeah, yeah, it's so. very important. I'm, I remember when I used to be at school, uh, you, you all of a sudden get, you get to know people's gardens. So you go, oh, they got really <laughs> nice greenery in that garden. So you, on the way to school, you, uh, I used to cycle and uh, cut a bit of greenery here and there because greenery <laughs> is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I never got caught, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> so for the people watching uh yeah uh, just look in your neighbor's garden sometimes then <laughs> you might find I've something got my nice. own garden now it's all good it's all good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i'd still be watching <laughs> yeah okay great boss or adrian uh yeah, boss thank you I prefer boss. okay boss thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, explaining about uh, what you do about the situation in the australian market uh, I learned a lot again. Yeah. Hopefully, the people are watching as well. Uh, hope to see you soon in real life so we can uh, drink a beer. Yeah, that sounds good. And have some bitter baller with that. Yeah, and then uh, we're in the same time zone because uh, I want coffee now and you're <laughs> for you it's time for a beer. So, uh. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah <laughs> I'm ready for it. It's 20 to 7, so uh, it's beer yeah. time, I think.
Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again. I'll see you soon. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Tot ziens.